Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me please start my keynote with a quotation. Everyone seems to agree we need greater variety in higher education, world-class research universities, regional universities, focusing more on teaching, specialist institutions, and even some private providers of professional training without too many academic frills. The buzzword is differentiation. The implied criticism is that what we have instead is a one-size-fits-all approach. This says Peter Scott, Professor of Higher Education Studies at the University College London in The Guardian about two years ago. And he goes on. No one imagines Cambridge or Coventry. Universities are trying to do the same thing. Also, universities are now so big that they are often highly differentiated internally. Top research departments coexist with enterprise units. Most universities are trying to do most things, although to very different degrees. Cambridge cares about widening participation up to a point, while Coventry doesn't write itself out of the research game. End of quotation. Peter Scott's clear analysis shows that the integration of autonomous higher education institutions into a coherent picture or system might be a major challenge, if not a mission impossible at all. Nevertheless, I will try to give you an overview of higher education in Austria and to highlight some of the questions and challenges we are actually facing in this country. Today, the Austrian higher education area comprises four sectors, public universities, universities of applied sciences, private universities, and university colleges of teacher education. All in all, about 70 institutions of higher learning, which differ strongly in size and tradition, profile, legal framework, funding streams, and accreditation requirements. Austria has one of Europe's oldest university systems. Some of its universities were founded quite early. University of Vienna, nearby, was founded in 1365. The universities of Graz and Innsbruck were founded in 1585 and 1669, respectively. The forerunners to many specialized universities we have today were founded in the 19th century. In the 1960s and 1970s, the expansion of tertiary education participation, accompanied by a simultaneous regionalization, saw the birth of additional universities in Austria. The University of Klagenfurt and the University of Linz, for instance, to name two of them. Today, Austria has 22 public universities with more than 300,000 students. As of the mid-1990s, the Austrian university landscape changed profoundly in just a few years. On the one hand, universities were granted significantly more autonomy. They are now fully-fledged legal entities of public law, funded by the federal government on the basis of three-year performance agreements. The art academies were granted the status of universities as well. On the other hand, the number of institutions of higher education in Austria tripled within a short period of time. Because of the establishment of universities of applied sciences, the spin-off of medical faculties, the accreditation of private universities, and the founding of university colleges 
for teacher education to previous pedagogical academies. The University Act of 2002 removed the universities from federal administration, ushering in the most substantial change in the Austrian higher education system in the recent past, thereby initiating a fundamental reorientation of university management and steering mechanisms. The new University Act, which became fully effective on the 1st of January 2004, has given the universities autonomy on account of the new control instruments, such as global budgets and performance agreements. As a result, the legal basis was prepared for creating entrepreneurial universities, which shall be in a position to access new funding sources in addition to the money received from the federal government. Moreover, the University Act established three autonomous medical universities in Vienna, Graz, and Innsbruck, which came into being when the former medical faculties were extracted from their parent universities. Since 2014, Austria has an additional university offering medical studies. The University of Linz has been started with the medical faculty. The University for Continuing Education Krems, or better known by its international brand name, the Danube University Krems, is a university faculty of a special kind with its own legal basis adopted in 1994. It serves the goal of postgraduate training and further training. Since 2004, its legal basis has been adapted to the structure of the University Act 2002. The University of Applied Sciences Studies Act of 1993 introduced the University of Applied Sciences sector in Austria. This was the result of an international development in the direction of a more job-oriented vocational sector of higher education institutions. From today's perspective, the differentiation of higher education towards more vocational program offers took place rather late so that the strong growth of higher education in the 70s and in the 80s mainly took place in the traditional, so-called traditional universities. The first University of Applied Sciences degree programs went into operation in 1994 and almost every year new degree programs are being added. The new feature, as compared to universities, is that there is even more freedom in terms of organizational law. Only the programs and also the institutions as such have to be accredited. The provider organizations are mainly private law entities. The federal government funds universities of applied sciences based on the number of students mainly. Today, the sector comprises 21 institutions with about 50,000 students. The Private Universities Act together with the Act on Quality Assurance in Higher Education established the procedure for the recognition of private universities opening up the third sector of our system. Since 2012, the Agency for Quality Assurance and Accreditation in Higher Education, so-called AQ Austria, has been the body responsible for approvals and extensions, both for the universities of applied sciences and private universities. Today, Austria has 13 private universities with about 10,000 students. It should be mentioned that not all of these institutions are fully privately funded. Although the federal uh, government is generally not entitled to fund private universities, some of these institutions receive public funds from the regional governments, giving them 
to some extent, the role of regional universities. The Teacher Education Act of 2005 established 14 public and private university colleges of teacher education to replace the hitherto to exist in post-secondary academies for teacher training. The sector at the moment has about 15,000 students. To round it all off, there is yet another special feature in the Austrian higher education and research area, the so-called IST Austria. IST means the Institute of Science and Technology Austria is a self-governing postgraduate research institution located in Kloster Neuburg, close to Vienna. It provides top-level research in the field of basic research as well as high-quality postgraduate education in form of PhD programs. The IST Austria started operating in 2009 and considers itself a research institution of international standing in the fields of natural sciences and technology. The Institute's field of research are chosen on the basis of the availability of internationally renowned scientists who are provided with a, yeah, hopefully, world-class research environment. It will not enter into fields in which it cannot offer infrastructure at an international top level. Seen from a functionally comparing perspective, one could say that the IST Austria uh, is mutatis mutandis, the Austrian excellence initiative. So far, IST Austria, an institution, and I have to, to uh, mention that, with not more than 45 professors, has won more than 30 ERC grants. The future challenge is the cross-linking with other Austrian higher education institutions so that they have a benefit of this initiative as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Austrian university system is characterized by a strikingly large number of specialized universities, namely the medical universities, University of Veterinary Medicine, University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, University of Mining, Vienna University of Economics and Business, technical universities, and six universities of the arts, a very important sector in our system, with 16 special branch universities and only six, so, so to say, comprehensive ones. The historical legislature, it is the parliament, arrived at a clear value judgment in a sense of a governance decision in favor of a system which already legally determines the rough pattern for university profiles. These specialized and partially rather small universities are therefore most likely to develop comprehensive institutional macro profiles. Thus, more intensive considerations with, with regard to specific focal points or with respect to profile development and the embedding of universities in the big picture were not a high priority for the first few years after the implementation of the University Act. The reasons for this can be found in the general framework conditions. First of all, it was necessary to breathe life into the new concept of autonomy in its essential aspect concerning the internal organization of the university and, of course, to implement the Bologna structure. Moreover, dealing with increasingly higher numbers of students also has presented a formidable challenge. It is notable, however, 
What has been achieved under the banner of profile development in the area of research infrastructure through specific programs in recent years? The objective was to strengthen the universities financially in a goal-oriented way during the implementation phase and to promote profile development. Accordingly, an intensive governance through research infrastructure still represents an effective leverage for interinstitutional coordination and institutional profile development. Regarding the ranking performance of the Austrian higher education system, generally speaking, the best Austrian universities rank in the range between 100 to 200 which means that Austrian universities are among the top 10 uh, percent of universities worldwide, with its three universities placed amongst the top 400 in the Times Higher Education rankings. Vienna is one of the leading global locations for higher education. The University of Vienna, the main building is very close to your venue today, is the highest ranked Austrian university in most rankings, which is also a result of its size, more than 90,000 students. The medical universities do remarkably well according to bibliometric indicators, but there is, and we have to admit this, there is generally only a limited number of Austrian universities represented on the lists or tables. Size, based on the number of students, influences a large number of factors and results compared to other universities which are ranked very highly. Austrian universities have to up to uh, 10 times more students per researcher and obviously that goes into the account. In addition, English-speaking universities especially benefit from their popularity and their international reputation. Using the analytical approach of the European Commission staff working document, progress towards the common European objectives in education and training of 2010, there were approximately 2.5 Austrian higher education institutions per 100,000 students in the top 500 world list of the Shanghai ranking. The figure for the US is only 0.84. Another system-oriented rating method can be found in the U21 ranking of national higher education systems which was developed by a consortium headed by the University of Melbourne. This ranking rates the performance of national higher education systems and covers 50 countries. The results for uh, 2017 show the following top 10 countries. USA, surprise, surprise. Switzerland, UK, Denmark, Sweden, Singapore, Canada, the Netherlands, Finland, Australia, and Austria is the runner-up. It holds the 11th rank. But the first issue of U MultiRank, a multidimensional, user-driven approach to international ranking of higher education institutions was released in 2014, covering more than 850 higher education institutions from more than 70 countries. Some Austrian institutions, namely Universities of Applied Sciences, which so far never had appeared in any international league table, showed remarkable and outstanding results. So, using methods which take the special circumstances of the Austrian higher education into account, the analysis shows good results, which we can work with. Of course, there is still enough room for improvement, and there has never been 
an Austrian Harvard, and probably never will. But there are good universities with individual outstanding departments and research groups. Within higher education institutions, a wide range of different types can be found. The balance between different types and sizes varies significantly between countries. And at least seen from an innovation system perspective, there is no single success model or optimal structure. Research activities and research quality, for instance, are major elements of diversity and differentiation between higher education institutions. While all higher education institutions teach students, of course, the extent of research activities varies considerably. But you can also find research universities which in reality have to teach 80% of the whole student population of the national higher education system. This actually is the case in Austria with its system, systemical trade-offs. Since the 1960s, all modern higher education systems have been facing exponential growth in the number of students. Since then, all of them have been dealing with the problem of how to reconcile the requirements of mass higher education with their responsibilities in research, teaching and nurturing a new generation of researchers. Most of the countries have chosen a binary institutional differentiation between, on the one hand, the sector of universities of applied sciences, which is teaching intensive, vocational training oriented, and hopefully less expensive, and which is supposed to absorb as large a portion of students as possible. And, on the other hand, a genuine university sector which is then left free to pursue its responsibilities in research and nurturing young researchers. But almost only one country, the Netherlands, maybe uh, Belgium is also in that, in that arena, has been successful in steering the majority of students toward the universities of applied sciences. In the Netherlands, more than 60% of all students are studying at universities of applied sciences and around 40% at universities. Many other countries have stopped halfway or are not yet so far. In countries where the binary differentiation of higher education sector is underdeveloped, Given the increasing number of students, the universities see themselves increasingly faced with the problem of achieving or maintaining research at a level that is internationally competitive. And conversely, if the size of the sector of the universities of applied sciences is too small, it is difficult for the reduction of the burden to occur in any meaningful way. There is definitely a challenge of massification and quality. Eurostudent 2015 gives evidence to the topic at hand. It shows that overall, students are quite satisfied with the aspects of quality in higher education in Europe overall. In Austria, however, we find a delicate situation combined with a demanding task. In all countries but Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Austria, and Romania, at least 60% of students are satisfied or very satisfied with the quality of teaching in their study program. 
in all countries but France, Denmark, Poland, Montenegro, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Croatia, Austria again, and Romania, at least 50% of students are satisfied or very satisfied with the organization of their studies and their timetable. Thirdly, satisfaction levels are generally relatively high regarding all covered aspects of quality in Estonia, Ireland, the Czech Republic, Armenia, and Finland, while they are generally comparatively low in Montenegro, Croatia, again Austria, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and Romania. The Austrian higher education system is frequently subject to criticism, especially regarding the relative low rate of higher education attainment in international comparison. There are also challenges, such as improvement of the staff-student ratio, enhancing the status of teaching, increasing university funding, and competitive funding for research, creating attractive career paths and so on. These challenges need to be addressed in order to be able to position Austria as an attractive and highly competitive science and research location. On the way to this goal, a better differentiation within the higher education system in Austria is required as well. The questions for Austria are the following. Firstly, how globally competitive institutions in the field of academic research could be created and could be further assisted? Secondly, how to cope with the huge numbers of students in the system? And thirdly, if it was necessary to further differentiate the higher education sector, also taking into account the opportunities of a stronger perception of the so-called third mission of higher education institutions. In discussions in Austria, it will be necessary to differentiate more precisely between profile development of the individual higher education institution and the diversity and functional differentiation of the diverse types of higher education institutions. With regard to the Austria higher education system, one can say that the different types emerged independently of one another in a natural process and demonstrate an organized feedback loop to the system only in a quite rudimentary form. In the year 2011, an external evaluation of the Austrian higher education system, written by Antonio Loprieno, Eberhard Menzel, and Andrea Schenkavicki, formulated its recommendations very concretely. I quote, in order to hold their own in international competition and to increase their international visibility, Universities in particular must hone their profile and decide what role they want to play in the national and the international context. Thus, it can happen that a certain university can see itself as an important hub and catalyst in a regional context. Another university, in turn, can have some departments that are very strongly oriented toward research or have an international orientation, while a third may be focused on excellent teaching and or the area of knowledge transfer. Once a university has decided on a certain strategy, it must be consistently implemented. Plans for development and research infrastructure must be directed toward this objective. This kind of profile development through teaching and research corresponds to required definition of focal points and must be reflected in the development plan that must be coordinated nationally. End of quotation. As you can see, 
Here it is again, the ideal of a framework plan in which all types of higher education institutions form an interconnected system according to objectives, discipline-oriented specializations, number, size, and location. In brief, ideally, someday the functional differentiation of the higher education types and the internal profile development will interact coherently. Ladies and gentlemen, the mission remains valid. Whether it will come to fruition remains to be seen. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, the last slide you presented, uh, we don't have to see it again. Um, you asked, uh, you were presenting data on, a, on an external evaluation of the Austrian system towards profile development. Um, have you, so how would you comment on the steps being taken towards that direction? Um, not how far we are yet, but what steps do you see being taken there? Thank you very much for that question. Well, we, as a ministry, we are actually um, very strongly striving to achieve that goal to, well, help the universities, the institutions to find their individual profile. We are mainly doing this by performance contracts. That means that a university would receive a global amount of money for three years and would sign a contract uh, pointing out all the well, development issues, all the, the major performance aspects of that institution in turn. Yeah. Uh, what, what we have to say is that full autonomy is rather new to Austrian universities. It was only implemented, well, 13 years ago. And after that legal act, we saw a very strong move of the individual institutions to follow their own way, which was good. They were, they were now free to, to uh, write their own development plans, to define their profiles, and we were actually fostering that process. But on the other hand, uh, the problem occurred that there is also a system perspective. And that's, that's a major point I, I tried to, to point out in my presentation, that it's not enough to have um, a strong, vibrant, autonomous institution, but at the same time, you actually need a national framework making all those different institutions cooperating and working together coherently as a system. And these issues have become very prominent in recent years. And do you see this as something that you as a governing body will supply this network infrastructure or is this something that has to grow organically from within the institutions? Well, that, that, that's a question of responsibility. I think it's very good that we have a strong, uh, a big amount of autonomy within the individual institution. But we also know that only an institution which can rely on its own funds is fully autonomous, that's quite clear. What, what I want to say is that as long as institutions spend the taxpayers' money, and they do to a very large extent, there is always the responsibility of the federal government to well make sure that that all would work together in a, in a, in a positive way. And that's, that's the task we have as a ministry, we are not here to intervene in day-to-day in -day business of universities, not at all. But uh, we are actually, we actually reliable to, to make sure that there are clear goals in the system as such and that the institutions would contribute towards the implementation of these goals. And that's, that's the challenge. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. Um, but I think I missed maybe or you didn't mention about anything about Bologna process and, and the Austrian education system. Or uh, what's happening right now between and uh, what you are going up to and I mean, mm -hmm. and so forth and so forth. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, the Bologna process in its basic elements, such so as say, 
um, almost has been fully implemented in Austria. So we have the bachelor master system and many other features along with that. Um, we, there are some exceptions. In, in some areas, partly in medicine, partly in, in the legal studies, uh, we have still the old uh, structure, but we are striving to come to, to a situation where 100% of, of our study offers would be Bologna conform, and new programs must be in that structure. Uh, Sven Kaspersen coming from Olbo University in Denmark, Co and mean coming from a country who has been through a quite intensive merger process among the universities and un creating the university colleges. I, I was, see, I was impressed by the number of, uh, number of universities you have in Austria. Do you expect in 10 years to have the same number of independent university, or do you expect to go through a merger process which is similar to the, to the country of Denmark, where we have seven universities? Yeah, thank you. This is a very, very good question, I have to admit. Um, obviously, um, you might know that the, the Danish example has been followed in Austria very closely. Um, Policymakers and institutions are fully aware of what is going on in your country and in, in others in the same direction. Um, and there actually was a very big debate in Austria about the size of the institutions and whether it would be useful to merge some of them. At the moment, uh, I would rather say that uh, there is actually no consensus to do so in the near future. But the, the issue is there. And um, to say the least, it is hotly disputed. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Jisman from Indonesia. With the rise of robotics, Internet of Things, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, leisure is expected to increase greatly in the years to come. Right now, it is estimated that we spend roughly almost six hours a day for leisure. By 2040, it is estimated to rise to around nine hours a day. Given Austrian geography, Austrian heritage, like musical heritage, is there any special emphasis uh, on education policy on tourism to be a truly competitive destination of cultural tourism in the rising age of uh, leisure. Mm. Thank you. Well, uh, tourism is a very important branch of the Austrian economy, uh, as you, as you um, supposed. Um, and that, that obviously is reflected in the educational system but rather in the vocational secondary school sector. There are very good schools for that, uh, for that uh, field, um, and not so strongly within higher education. Now, there are some offers in higher education, but not to a large extent. Mainly, the professionals needed in that, in that arena are actually trained in vocational secondary schools, which are highly specialized. Thank you, uh, Professor Rungano Zobgo, Great Zimbabwe University. As Minister and Government, is there a body which ensures a minimum board of knowledge in every university or which monitors quality in universities or is this left entirely to uh, each individual university? Mm -hmm. Well, there is actually a national framework of quality assurance. It depends on the type of institution, uh, what, what requirements are to be met. Um, for the universities of applied sciences and the private universities, the system is that you actually need to have an institutional accreditation and each studying program also needs an accreditation. There is a public agency here in this country funded by the ministry basically it's, it's called AQ Austria. I mentioned it shortly in my presentation. For the public universities, it's a bit different. Uh, public universities are not 
um, not obliged to have accreditation for each individual program, but they need to have a, a quality assurance system, and that system needs to have an, an uh, external audit every few years, and that is also done by AQOSG. So you can say that all the higher education institutions are, are in the framework of external quality assurance. Thank <music> you.